Ooh, what's up, everybody? And of course, welcome to this video from your truly the Skyrender. And today's video is, of course, a top 10 video of Pokemon that are forgotten. Now, before going in, I'm not gonna do the usual stuff. I'm not gonna say, Did you know about Maractus? No, and not even with that. I'm not gonna go, Oh, did you know about Gormadan? Oh, no. This list is gonna be, I'm gonna actually take the high route and actually talk about Pokemon that tend to be forgotten in the meta. I do expect you guys to wa that watching me to actually know about every Pokemon. So even the most forgotten Pokemon are really not that forgotten. Hell, I'll even say the Maractus and Wormadan are famous because they are so forgettable. So with that said, guys, I'm going to show you 10 Pokemon that I think are not only good in the meta, but tend to be forgotten in them due to other Pokemon doing either its role better or they're just hard to use in contrast to different Pokemon in the same So, the first one we're going to talk about is actually Articuno, as you guys can see here on the screen. See? Flawless editing, trying to actually do this well. Um, I mean, it's not a top 10 really anyway, it's just forgotten months. But Articuno is, well, let's just say this, is most famous for its in immensely high weaknesses together with, of course, extreme weakness to self rocks. And that's all right, it's actually a valid point and there's a very good reason why it isn't used in the first place. I agree, there are a lot of things going with it that are bad, but if you could work around that, then Articuno actually stands somewhat tall. It has a lot of HP, of course, a base 90. Its defense is really, really, really high. It's on the level of Cresselia when it comes to its defense capabilities. To get it with Roost, it actually could keep itself rather healthy. And it actually has a decent attack and special attack. I say decent because obviously they leave a much to desire. What makes its stats fairly well or fairly good is its conjunction with, of course, its stab being both eyes and flying, being extremely good stabs to have in the game. There are a lot of things that are weak to this kind of combination, and you can take on a plethora of things to do to it. Its mood pool is not too shabby either. Access to the like of this traditional stuff of even Hurricane but also Ice Beam, which of course, standard stuff. But then we have the unique move, of course, Freeze Try, which actually makes this guy being able to take on bulkier warrior types fairly well. And of course, it has the ability to work up if it needs to. And we have, of course, more unique moves such as Ice Shot, so it has priority going into it, which makes its attack not completely redundant. And it has a priority, consider that it actually is somewhat slow. Now, it's not as slow Pokemon for being a Bulkemon, but, due to its, of course, offensive typing, it should have had a bit more faster conjunction for it to be, of course, better. But with all that said, Articuno has a lot of things going for it, and Roost is one of those things that definitely can neglect some damage, one of them definitely being the take off Thunderbolt, which is a very, very common move for it. And, of course, with that pull, it could even take a possible rock hits without actually losing too much HP and then be able to retaliate. So, Articuno tends to be forgotten due to its being extremely hard to use well. It needs stuff to keep it healthy, but if you can keep that healthy, Articuno is actually really hard to kill. As long as rocks are off the field, Articuno is one of the more bulkier offensive Pokemon that actually can stand tall for a long time. I have tried it in RU, and um, it has some relevance there. Its free strike simply solves a lot of things being able to go on the lives of Seismitoad and Olamola without really any big issue. Of course, it has, like I said, a weakness to rocks, which makes it hard to use and you need a proper spinner. But if you find a way to work around that and use like in a power fire or something like that, you will be able to set in against a lot of matchup with very little issues actually. So Articuno, one of the more forgotten Pokemon on this list of course. So, Alright, the next one is actually Haunter. How about that? Haunter, my guys, is um Hmm, how to, how to say this delicately? Haunter is a Pokemon that tends to be forgotten because it's bigger brother. Thing is, his bigger brother is locked into OU, which means that people are forgetting about Haunter. Haunter is an extremely good typing with, of course, Ghost and um, Poison. Almost screwed that up, how about that? But in all honesty, it has a lot of things going for it. The things that we're gonna talk about that isn't so good, that probably the reason people avoid it in the first place, is that it has 45 base HP. Uh, which is... Uh, it's fairly bad. Defense is also fairly bad. 45 in defense, 55 in special defense. That, that is awful. It's regular attack 50, yeah. You cannot see the point. These are factors 
for a middle stage mod that aren't good. Now, what would make the difference? Well, take a look at his special attack. And take a look at his speed. It's strong. It's really strong. And it doesn't actually miss any moves that, of course, Gang already have, outside of potential of some um, physical moves, which in the end doesn't necessarily matter now, do they? It has access to Shadow Ball, Sludge Bomb, Sludge Wave, Thunderbolt, Energy Ball. It can do a lot of stuff, and it can do them really well. Knight at 5 in speed is well beyond what you need, and Dream Unities, of course, being somewhat regular attacks that you could be facing. Gengar stands fairly tall. People tend to use it with, of course, having it as a suicide lead, with, of course, Focus Sash. I myself actually like to use it with Life Orb, and for one reason, it hurts a lot. And you can also use this to get it with Trick and Choice Scoff or Choice Specs to, of course, hit things really hard, but also screw things over if they come in and it can't fend it off properly. So, yeah, Haunter, extremely, extremely interesting as a Pokemon. And, um, it's just an overarching offensive Pokemon, which actually help a lot of teams. Uh, I would push this guy up to RU for, of course, being that it's able to actually do well in RU due to its offensive typing. But it should be noted that, as the other guys have mentioned, it needs proper build. It needs things to switch into, with, of course, if you can keep yourself healthy. And slow U-turns and volts would just help you well when you can come in really safely, which is actually what you need. Haunter does naturally outspeed a lot of stuff, and it actually is, of course, immune to two of the more common priorities, of course, of the likes of Mock Punch and actually Fake Out. So it can actually do some damage to a letter of teams really, really well. But it is fragile. You have to treat it as a fragile little flower that it is. You basically have to use it as a semi worse Mega Um But it, he will prove to be useful. 115 special attack with Life Orb. It does KO things. There are very few things that can take on Haunter well. If you aren't faster, you're going to get hurt. I move closer to the screen now. Hey. Anyway, guys, next one is, of course, Sangus. And Sangus is a Pokemon that many people know about. Definitely know about this Pokemon. Uh, usually are worked into, the, of course, the in game team, but then once the meta starts out, People just seem to forget it, or it's just too hard to use, therefore just forgotten, basically. Uh, as you guys can see here, it is a very, very hyper-offensive glass cannon, and I tend to say that this Pokemon has what I would call the normal type bulk, which is that they either have everything or nothing, and this guy touched the nothing part. Uh, 73 in HP, which really doesn't necessarily matter, it's actually higher than average, but its defenses not so much. 60 base, yeah, that, that's a Mac Punch kill from Conkeldor without any any question about it. The thing that's going for it is that it's actually a bit more faster than your average Mon, and of course it's extreme high attack of 115. Even taking on Southland in that matter actually being no stronger. But what makes Sangu's unique Pokemon that it is, it's of course Toxic Boost. It's a choice of Bandit Boost, a 50% boost to any attacking move if it is offensively oriented. And of course, you have, to, you have to be toxic to use it, which is both good and bad, because you can't get status while using it, but sadly you do have the timer on you due to it. So if I would see a change towards the toxic boost, I would say that it would be great if toxic boost worked more like that it set the motion, everything in motion, you got complete immunity to of course any status, but probably didn't lose HP to it. That would work much, much better than it is today. Having that said, Sangur's moveset is actually really, really, really versatile and could be utilized really well to any team. Of course, one being that it has facade, extremely hard hitting, and uh, my cat is. Hey, buddy. Nay. <laughs> that is working. Anyway, um, of course, it has facade, which just hurts everything. You know, even Pokemon that resist it does not really take it well. We did a calc on it actually, and Adamant, of course, um, Sangus hitting a facade, of course, on the right period, does 30%. That, that's that's a switch in once. <laughs> but outside of that, it gets the likes of Low Kick, which is an extremely good move, knock off, it gets the elemental punches, which means that it can actually utilize itself really, really well against almost anything. It has a normal type move pull too, which means it can do a lot of stuff really well. 
Sadly, of course, like I said here, it is a Pokemon that, due to its timer, it's it's kind of hard to use and it's very, very, very niche to use well. But I do believe Sagos has a good relevance in, of course, the meta. Uh, being able to actually outspeed the usual walls in any tier is actually a very, very good capability. Night Base is just enough to actually outspeed Eliza Priscilla. And trust me, Chrysella do not want to take a Toxic Boost hit for this guy. It is simply not possible for it to survive. And even if it does, it's very unlikely to kill it back. So Zangus would actually make a very, very fine companion in almost any meta. Mind you guys, it is a normal type, which means that any Mag Punch will kill it. And it is, of course, pretty darn weak to stall in the end because of the timer that it sets itself on to, to be actually able to work properly. Having that said, Sangus is not only a Forgotten it's a freaking scary one, and I do encourage you guys to try it out in actually any meta, not only PU. Trust me, it'll work with the right matchup. Alright, so obviously the next one up is actually Delphox. Now, Delphox is a mod that I know that people do know about it. Delphox has been used by many players, of course, being Fennec and being, of course, the first Pokemon of choice. Now, when it came to meta, Delphox became somewhat obscure, and I think it was a combination of its typing, but also its ability, and it actually required a lot of a player to use it well. It wasn't your average minded calm mindset psychic type, no. This was actually a Victini based special attacker. I'm trying to say that that's, that was a good thing, but it actually is. Psychic and of course fire, it's a good typing, but it tends to be that it has been focused on that it's weak to rocks, it has just more weaknesses by psychic typing and sadly lacked offensive pressure to do better with that in mind. Victini has options to do well against a plethora of matchup even though it only 100 base. Delphox while being faster just doesn't have that many options. They're usually locked to the likes of Life Orb or Solar Beam with Power Herb to actually stick with Magician, all of them being extremely good ways of actually handling things but as I said, after that Things kind of get over, things are kind of over at that point. So Delphox need a lot of stuff else to actually be worked really better. Now, I will try to so sell this guy to you the any way I can. And I <laughs> really, really mean selling him because I know that Delphox isn't the, the best type of Pokemon. But it has things going for it in actually any tier. Uh, Magician should be actually utilized as a thing that are good. Colberberry... I was gonna say, but Delphox are actually one of the more preservative mods where you actually can. Not only Willow with Sphinx, you can still write them. That shouldn't be shuffled with, that shouldn't be something that you should just forget about. It actually kind of destroys teams. Snagging in Violet, for example, kind of annoying. Poor Gun Suit does not stand a chance against this kind of matchup. And of course, Coal Mine, Psy Shock, Psychic, if you decide that. Dark Ball, Shadow Ball. Flamethrower or Fire Blast, Overheat and Focus Blast and Grass Knot are moves that does work well. You get your well-rounded stuff with this and Delphox is actually able to do well against a lot of matchup. Don't let its weaknesses be a prominent thing for you because while them do suck, you could also use them to your ability and Culverberry is definitely one of the better ways of doing just so. And of course you have the standard stuff with of course Power Herb Solar Beam while not the best kind of set, it's still kind of annoying to deal with. And snagging another player's item are always a massive disadvantage or crippling effect on your opponent. And Delphox actually does this fairly well. So don't trifle with this guy. It has a decent bolt to it. It is really fast. Doesn't have the offensive pressure like we've seen it do. But it does have a better overall stamina to do better and stay longer than Victini can do. Victini is a massive glass cannon with a lot of offensive pressure. Delphox doesn't necessarily bring that. He brings more of a strategic point and you should use him for his stamina alone and not his offensive presence. I'll give you... Kansa! Nah, but in all honesty, I'm a Mola. Now, I know you guys would say, well, it's the most common Pokemon in RU, and I'll agree. And there's where it all ends. Why isn't Almamola used outside of RU in actually any fashion? Almamola, as you guys can see on the screen, is an extremely annoying Pokemon to deal with. Regenerator? Why? 
and of course very 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 much HP of 165 base, 75 attack which isn't all that impressive, uh, 80 base events which also isn't all that impressive, tremendous special events I'm gonna say as you guys can see, that is, that is not true. <laughs> <laughs> that is <laughs> that would be an annoying Pokemon to deal with. Oh, honor you guys. Obviously, it's 45 special defense and 65 speed, not 165. Fuck you, Sceptile. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, guys, um, as it, as you guys can see, the stats aren't that impressive. What makes this guy impressive is that it has just so much HP. You can actually, while a defensive hit does a lot of damage, it's the same situation as like a Blissey, where yes, it's 200 HP, but in the grand scheme of things, that may be up 30%. <laughs> that is so scary. And Alamola is a superb wish passer, much, much more than Vaporeon. Vaporeon, I would make a statement, is a much, much worse Pokemon than Alamola. Alamola should definitely be higher, or at least be used much, much more frequently in the likes of Yu but even know you because it does take on matchup really, really, really well. And of course, you get it with either Assault Vest and Mirror Coat, which is also extremely annoying. It could do really well with just a defensive regular Skeptic. And of course, Scald, Wish, Protect, Toxic, or Knockoff. It works. It is a very, very easy Pokemon to use because it just, it's so easy to set in motion, it's so easy to keep healthy, and just keep on going. And of course, being that if you have used a set with Scald and Toxic, it doesn't care about Burn or anything like that. It can take on Arcanine really well, Inferno really well. There are just so many things this guy does right that um, I don't understand why it isn't used higher. Uh, I know it's a simple mon, I know it doesn't have a lot of things going for it offensively, but trust me guys, this Pokemon is super hard to kill. And it can annoy teams for days on end, and Regenerator just makes it that much harder to deal with. And now, of course, when Arena Trap or Shadow Tag is actually banned from OU, you would assume that this guy would make a stature, but it isn't. But trust me, this guy will fuck anyone up with little to no issue, due to its, of course, natural capabilities of actually not dying. Right, the next one I introduce is of course Mega Glalie. Of course, nobody actually forgot about Mega Glalie, at least not in that fashion. Everybody remember the broken jaw guy, basically, of course, the demo of Mega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. But once the meta started out, it actually actually wasn't utilized all that well. And I can kind of get why. If you look at the stats, you're going to realize that it isn't excelling in every fashion, um, it's not even a speeder Pokemon, 80 base attack, I was gonna say, but base HP is of course kind of normal, but then we have 120, it's, a, it's offensive typing, or a defensive stat set, but of course uh, attack and spell attack, and then we have of course 80 base in both special defense and regular defense, not that impressive, and 100 in base speed, yeah, that, 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 that's not gonna work, now that is definitely not gonna work, having that said, there are things here that people are forgetting about Mega Lely, and that is that is a superb Pokemon to fit different roles. One of the better roles you can actually fit with this guy is actually a great suicide lead. It has access to Light of Spikes, obviously, but of course we have other things such as Return, Double Edge, and Explosion. And it has, of course, access to Freeze Try and Earthquake. And the thing is here, in the higher tiers, really think about it, are you facing that many Rapid Spinners? Well, the ones you do are a ground typing, they cannot take on Glalie. Then you think about, okay, but Defoggers then, what can they do? Well, they're usually flying type, they cannot take on Glalie. That works also with a few water types in the tiers. Water types that usually can carry Defog outside, of course, Empoleon cannot deal with Glalie. It is that simple. Glalie takes on every matchup where hazard removal could be implemented, and it does that really well. And it's also a good offensive mod, it has access to Eye Shot, if it needs to be speeder, it has access to Crunch, which actually does kind of hurt if you want to take on the likes of Unicolis for something you do. So Glalie is actually a lot better than all you give it credit for, I'll even go so far and say that it's better in UU and OU than it is in RU. In RU I do believe it's holding somewhat back due to the stature of the tier being right now at least. 
but um, I do believe Glele is definitely underappreciated and definitely a forgotten Pokemon outside of RU. Therefore, he's of course on this list because this is a guy you don't want to deal with in the right hand or the right So, hand. coming up next is um, this guy, Halucha. Halucha is a Pokemon that it's not necessarily forgotten in that fashion, but due to the standings right now, you know, of course, in BL means that it only can be utilized in OU, have kind of declined its usage. Now, it should be said, it's extremely viable in OU. Without a doubt, flying, fighting, pretty scary, pretty scary, and it actually has a stat to boost. Now, it's. It has actually. I should say this and be as frank as I can. It has underwhelming stats, but the stab is right. And it's one of those things where it hurts enough to actually be a, a reckoned force to be. I said that wrong, but never mind. Uh, one and then, of course, 18 speed may short out speed a lot of relevant mons. Also, of course, make a lot of money, but actually is kind of scary. But the usual stuff is, of course, acrobatics, high jump kick, sky attack, roost, or U turn. That works, but you have so many options with Halucha outside of that. You have Limber, you don't necessarily have to utilize Unburden on a Pokemon that already are fast. And of course you got Mold Breaker, which... Eh, it works. Um, it's not the best. But Limber is a good response, and it actually ensures that Halucha can take on a very very scary mon such as Thunderous. While Thunderous does KO it, Halucha can dent it and damage it with the likes of Rock Slide. Um, it gets Fire Punch, which is just insane. Uh, I do believe you get Ice Punch too, and or at least Thunder Punch. It gets Thunder Punch. Then we have Green Punch. It has Iron Head. It has Low Kick. If you don't want to utilize High Dump Kick, it has a plethora of options, and it actually has access to Bulk Up and Roost if you so desire. And trust me, this guy can stand against a few matchup and Roost because of since it is faster, it won't take super effective damage usually, depending on what you're facing, but. Yeah, having all that said, the reason I think it's declining usage has been when it comes to OU is that there are Pokemon that does his role. Maybe not better, but definitely easier to use due to the course they're typing. We just want a lot of them being definitely Italian Flame. Um, very, very useful to spam Raybird, and he wins against Alucha. Therefore, Italian Flame is usually the one that takes it up. And they are a plethora of good fighting types in OU too. So. How Lucha is kind of niche, even though it is a good Pokemon, and I think that is the reason it isn't used as often, and somewhat become forgotten in OU. And trust me, guys, it's the reason it has a BL. It's broken for UU. If if it is broken for you, it, then it is on par in OU. Trust me on this. So definitely give How Lucha a shot at least one time or another, because trust me, he is a good guy to use very, very threatening in OU. So right, now we come to one that I actually like a lot, and that is Regirock. Now Regirock of course resides in, in U as of right now, and does that fairly well. Together with Rhydon, it's a mon that, um, how to say this delicately, are, it's a worse Rhydon, but people are forgetting that Regirock feels a different role than Rhydon. Rhydon is a more offensive mon, Rhydon has the better stabs, which is why the reason is, I think, that it's more used. Stab Earthquake. Pretty darn scary. Pretty darn scary. But Regirock, like I said, fits another type of role. It's a more defensive mod, without recovery, sadly. But it has 100 base attack, 80 base HP, 200 base defense, and 100 special defense, which is more than enough for a plethora of matchups. It is, like the others of his brothers, it is a slower Pokemon of 50 pace, but it can do a lot of stuff and it can do a lot of stuff well. Now, the common sets are usually a Stealth Rock user with Thunder Wave, that's fine, that actually works really well, but Red Rock can do a lot of stuff. I have seen a Solvez user with Drain Punch, which is also due to 100 base attack and its bulk, it does that really well, it's a hard mom to kill. And also seen Rock Poly's weakness policy also works really well due to it actually having a great amount of actually moves and of course sets to use. The usual set is where the has actually like a Stone Edge, obviously Smackdown if you want to go that route. Uh, Earthquake, while not stabbed, it still is a great filler. And then we have the usual stuff, of course, Fire Punch, Brain Punch, 
and a flutter of other moves, it actually does a lot of stuff really well. And due to him being so stamina heavy, he can see in against matchup it's going to lose. I say that because it actually retaliates really well. One more base attack does sting for a lot of Pokemon. And if you can hit something super effectively and actually break a sun or something, then Regidark has filled its purpose. I actually really like the Thunder Wave set, it's annoying to deal with. Because of the stamina of uh, Regirock, he can actually just keep on going and are really hard to fell. Uh, I've seen this guy in RU doing very well really, and even in OU, uh, I've seen this guy actually exist and actually do it work. The thing is, like I said, not being able to kill it so easily makes it hard to stop. And like I said, Assault Vest set it has a few niches to it and definitely works in OU, with of course the likes of Explosion, as a possible hard kill suicide lead. And of course with Fire Punch, not even Veraphorn is safe against it, which is not only amusing, it's actually kind of scary and cool to think that Regirock, being known for not being as good as Ride on Rhyperior, actually fills other roles that they simply cannot in that kind of meta. It's, it's a scary mod, and I do encourage you guys to give this guy a shot whenever you get a chance, because it's forgotten just because other Pokemon does its role better, but as I said, it feels other role than just offensive parts, and it does that again kind of well. It actually does. For the people who knows me, know how much it pains me to talk about Sork. This guy is a deal to be reckoned with. It's beyond me how long Sork was in NU. It got the BL eventually, I do believe, in spring this year, 2016. Until then, <laughs> it was the worst thing ever. And I, of course, you know, I was an NU pocket for quite some time. I always had to think about Sork when I made a team. And that just had me so agitated so long. And Sork actually shares a lot of things with Heracross when it comes to stats. Sok has 75 base HP, of course, and I do believe Heracross has 80. They share the same attack of 125, same defense, 75. Then Heracross does a massive leap period. I have then 40 in special attack instead of 30. And of course, in special defense, Heracross is 95 instead of 75. Doesn't necessarily matter all that much, to be honest. And of course, they both share 85 in speed. Now, one would actually go so far and say that Mega Horn is a bigger deal than a possible knockout from Sulk, and I'll agree. But then we talk about the abilities, and things get kind of rough. Uh, because Sulk has 30. Sulk can lead and actually be safe for one turn, hurt something, probably kill it, and be fine. Heracross can die turn one. Sure, Heracross doesn't have guts. Or, I mean, Sulk doesn't have guts. Fine. And it doesn't have Moxie. But really, it's not too often you use Moxie with Heracross. It's kind of hard to pull off. Sok has inner focus. I've seen Sok defeat Mega Kangaskhan because they go fake out on it and he doesn't care one bit and retaliates. Nightmares. And of course, 30, like I said, Mole Breaker. Mole Breaker, which I do believe is the better ability. The only Pokemon made for dealing with um, Sok is actually Rotom Fan, due to this being Thunder and Elec or, or it's gonna Thunder, Electric and Flying, and actually isn't necessarily care about the Mole Breaker, even though it has Levitate, right? That's the only reason to use Rotom Fan was to deal with freaking Sok. And now that that's over, Sok moved, like I said, to RU or BL3, I believe, in the spring, and it took way too long, because so is a massive threat to deal with. Salak Berry sturdy with, of course, Reversal. Wow. Um, and it also has Bulk. Like, 75 defenses on HP, it's not bad. It can take a hit if it's forced to with, of course, Choice Cough and Mole Breaker. It's just, it works. I, I just, I can't stress enough how viable Sork really is. And people tend to say that you know, it has issues, but I just can't see them. I could make an argument for that it does lacking the dual typing makes it a worse fighting type, but it's still a superb fighting type. It does its role really, really well, and it's a very, very good wall breaker if you decide to take a choice banded variant. 
is a good Scarfer if you decide to take that route. Um, being, of course, a Lake and Sweeper, Revenge Killer, you want to take that route. It works really well. Sog is a powerhouse and it works really well in Yuju. I will even stress enough that it could work in OU. Probably not as well. <laughs> But it does have a lot of power to it, and it's actually extremely hard to deal with because of it's just massive presence on the switching. So, Sok, I hate your guts. I really hate your guts, but I can't deny what an awesome Pokemon this guy actually is in the meta. I might hate you, and I might never want to use you ever, but I can't deny what a presence you really are. So, okay, my last one, Jellicent. This is the reason I actually wanted to make this list in the first place. Jellison for me is actually one of the funnier stories I guess I should actually share with you guys. I never used Jellison. Uh, I did play Generation 5 obviously and Jellison was actually an OU back then but I didn't play of course competitive Pokemon back then. But um, never used Jellison, never cared for it back in X and Y, never used it. First year of Ores. Never used it. I did see it in RU and I was thinking, yeah, Drapion, knockoff, boom, gone. Well, then I started a league and I needed a water type and Jellicent was the only one with recovery that was left. So I took Jellicent. And I guess I should thank my buddy Ellis for that because nowadays I actually understand why Jellicent is such a massive threat and it's beyond me why it's RU. I do believe most people kind of, when of course the meta was starting, realized that Defong solved of course the spin blocking capabilities that this guy have. It's still a spin blocker. Sure, Defong will hit off, sure, Stalder plays won't work, but Jellicent has other factors to it. It's one of the few mods that has enough bulk to take a knockoff and the result with Will Wisp and just, mm mm, suck on that, sucker. But, but really, and Ghost and Water Type is a very, very good typing. I don't necessarily believe that Jellicent gets a worse typing due to the matchup or being a Ghost type. You know, it gets, I do believe, that's three more weaknesses. But who cares, right? Being weak to Ghost, Dark, and. Uh, what is that? Actually, I don't know, two more weaknesses. My bad. So it has four weaknesses. All being easily to actually withstand and of course push out on. And um, hmm, it's a very easy Pokemon to use. And it has enough pull to deal with other world breakers in other tiers. In Yuyu, this guy does well. It, it thrives even because there's so many Pokemon that can't stop it. And then we go to, of course, OU in the same kind of situation. There aren't really that many Pokemon that take it on naturally. Even Log Punny to some extent, even with Scrappy hitting a return high jump kick. He can take those hits due to his massive bulk and retaliate with either a Skull or of course a Will-O-Wisp. And after that, it can actually recover back on. It has so many things going for it that it just blows my mind how, well, how little this guy is actually used. Defense of 70 might look bad, but with that HP it actually takes hits for days on end. And it actually has a few niches going to it outside of course the standard set of Skull, Hex, Ghost Ball, the Save and Shadow Ball of course. Uh, Will always recover. It can use Pain Split if you want to go take that route to retaliate and of course Pain Split back, which is very severely annoying. And it also has access to Water Spout and Giga Ring. And 60 base might look bad, but if you know what you're facing, then 60 base might just be enough for a Water Spout if you want to take that route. And it actually got a funny to use. But Giga Ring, good filler. If you know you're meeting a lot of. Um, if you know you're going to go up against a Mega Swamper, then. Mmm, Giga Brain, sucker. <laughs> it just works. And Water Absorb, I should say, as an uh, ability, so nice, so important. Uh, so many Volcanions that thrive right now, it's just so nice to just send in Yelis and just get in there, buddy. Embrace your situation, and it works. Um, so, yeah, I, I, the, the last pick here is obviously me just enjoying a Pokemon way, way more than I thought I would. And it's the Pringles Jellyfish. And it's just, it's such a great Pokemon, and I I don't really know why it isn't used more. I, I can't see it. I mean, Vaporeon tend to get used a lot, used with Wish Passer. Who needs a Wish Passer when you have Jellicent, right? <laughs> it even, I'll, I'll, I'll make a statement that Jellicent could be a possible better than Mahorek, due to the moveset alone. Um, 
it just works that well and it's it's one of those mods that I guess if we would be famous for something, it would be famous for doing one role extremely well. Probably superb even. And uh, yeah, I enjoy it. I, I fairly enjoy it. And I do ask you guys to try this guy out because I definitely feel that I was missing out. And I'm actually really glad I did. So with that said guys, that is actually going to end this top 10 video. I hope you enjoyed the way I was presenting this kind of video. I know we're getting that extreme length again, and I'm sorry for that, I actually am. But I hope you enjoyed it anyway, and I hope I didn't feel like I was wasting your time. And what do you guys think? What are your Pokemons that you have been using or feel that they actually make sense to use in another tier than RU or OU or whatever? You feel that they, they, they pose a threat that are forgotten because there's they tend to be either be hard to use or they just other Pokemon does the same role slightly better or easier to do it. Uh, if you have one of those mods that you think could do another role better or just are forgotten a tier, damn, just write that and I'll, I'll read them, of course. So, with all that said, thank you so much for watching, guys, and uh, I'll see you in the next top 10. Until then, guys, take care. Bye.